Well guys, here we are with yet another 5 minutes GP review, little series I've been trying to make which you guys seem to like. So today we're covering this RTX 5060 Ti 16GB MSI Ventus 2X, the 16GB because you should not buy the 8 one. But also in this series I do not judge the actual model, so I don't judge 5060, I judge the custom. So in this case I'm judging the MSI Ventus 2X. Now if you guys have been following the channel, probably seen the 5060 Ventus 2X review. You probably know I don't love this series, but uh, I figured, hey, maybe the TI version is a little bit better. Am I right? And boy, was I wrong. This thing is trash. You shouldn't buy it. Now, let me clarify. It is not that bad, but there are better options on the budget end out there, which I've covered already. So, so far, my top two picks are the Zotac Solid 5060 Ti and the Gigabyte Ice which is the best one, in my opinion, because it costs the same, even less at the moment. And it's white, it looks better, and it cools better. Now, these ones have been having fan issues. Now, mine, this one doesn't, but it has a bit of coil wine, okay, which you can fix by undervolting. Sure, it's what we do on the channel, but it's not good. And I've had one with issues on the fan. So MSI on their Ventus lineup. I really like the Ventus lineup in general, like on higher-end models. I even got a 5090 Ventus for my personal computer but on the lower end they haven't quite been doing what they should so let's go over the usual things so the packaging is pretty basic you get literally nothing inside of it but that's okay we're getting a mid-range card even though mid-range is expensive nowadays so i'm thinking they should have the budget to at least make it a bit more enjoyable in terms of unboxing experience which is what other brands are doing a little bit they are not they don't give you anything in the box fan noise when the fan works they're not bad they're not quiet either and the pass-through design on the card is pretty bad it doesn't really pass through because the hole is too thin on the card i prefer what gigabyte has been doing on their one it is very plasticky and i'm talking it really feels cheap it feels like a 1050 from seven years ago the gaming x model would feel even even worse than a 1050 gaming x this thing feels the material quality is bad you can tell it's not gonna age well one plus is that the card is very small it's smaller than my hand so it goes into sff builds no problem even in small cases no problem so that's pretty good and it has one hdmi to display port one hp connector no dual bio switch and a full size x16 slot even though it is an x8 that I kind of like. Temperature, it doesn't run too hot, but the memory is not low either. But again, we have 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Even though it's GDDR7, which is very efficient, it is on a relatively cheap cooler. But that's what we are reviewing. So that's why I'm not happy. If you need to buy one because it's cheap or you're watching this video in the future, you find one second hand. Yes, you can buy it. It doesn't have any big issues. Just make sure the fan is working without noise. But if you can buy another choice, especially if you're buying brand new, I would buy something else. Now, my main advice if you buy this card in the end is to go ahead and undervolt it. It's what we do on the channel. I have a tutorial for it. It's gonna work for every single card. It's gonna give you more performance, lower temperature, etc. If you undervolt it, it's better. But again, you can undervolt every single GPU. So it's not right that we have to undervolt a card to make it run quiet, to fix the coil wind. It should be fixed out of the box. With that said, if you like the series, drop a like and subscribe. If you have one, Drop a comment down below, tell me if it's working well for you or if it's working bad for you. And see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.